picked up a good block from Castile and is two yards shy of the first down at the 17 yard line. Well, I think that's what Brian Johnson's going to have to do because it, the times he has been hesitant and he's kind of waited for the receivers to get open, that's the times that he's, he's always been sacked or he throws the ball away. He picked up a great block by Ganther coming from the left here. He blows up Modkins right there to open up a seam. Then he gets another block by Castillo to pick up some yep. valuable yardage here to give him a chance here on third down. And again, it is third and two, but you want it's a long two, first of all, but you have to be thinking, don't make the big mistake. Field goal from here is 35 yards. You're back in range. Castile, the H-back, comes back. Pitch to Ganther, trying to get to the outside, is pulled down, so it'll be a field goal attempt instead of a first down. What a half Jeremy Modkins has had. He has been fabulous in the second half and now on into this first overtime. Mike, the one thing that you have to see here, a little bit better by Johnson, is to attack the defensive end, Blake. He doesn't attack him. It gives Blake a chance to come downfield. Not only is Motkins there, look at Blake. Blake's the guy that he pitched off, pitched off of. Better job next time by Brian Johnson of attacking on the option to take Blake completely out of the, out of the picture. 34-yard kick for Dan Beardall, his uh, biggest Utah kick. He kicked at Snow Junior College. Out of Eric Weddle's hold from 34, it's good. And TCU now knows a field goal to keep the game going. A touchdown to win, or Utah will win game 19 in a row. Big pressure kick by Beardall. Those go by, and they're like, ah, it's only a field goal. It's a huge kick. Even extra points are huge in overtime. Mm -hmm. I mean, you score a touchdown after the... You know, let's say you gave up a touchdown. You assume that it's going into the next overtime, but you still have to hit the extra points. So you're right. Even field goals are really, really big here. A man who is uh, married. His brother Derek has walked onto the team here. He worked on his uh, big game guide skills on a ranch in eastern Utah with his dad when he was growing up. You know, he kicked a big field goal there, and now TCU can win it with a touch. Tie it with a field goal. Look for option here by Ty Gunn. They go with Robert Merrill, the experienced back, running right. Gain of three. Joe Giannone, who's got to be closing in on uh, eight or nine tackles here. And, uh, won the job of this wide-open linebacker position. Grady Marshall started the opener against Arizona. The play of Giannone got him the start against Utah State, and he'll keep that job with his effort here tonight. Struggling here with his his chin strap. This is the point in the game where it doesn't even matter. You're just out there trying to make plays and trying to get TCU push him back, force that field goal, see if you can get a win. Second down, then six. Right back to Merrill with blocking. Merrill the first down and more. He's down to the seven yard line, and it's first and goal for TCU. And Merrill comes up uh, hobbling a little bit as he continues to cramp up. But the 18-game win streak has only six yards between it and the end. What a job of sealing the perimeter of the defense. Big tight ends in there. You have Jackson, the fullback, leading the way. They did a great job of sealing that. They give it to Merrill. He goes for about a yard and a half right into the waiting arms of the best interior lineman in this league, Steve Fafita. Mike, I'll be really surprised if TCU has success running right through the heart of the Utah defense with Fafita and the great linebacker play we've seen tonight. I think they're going to have to get to the perimeter. They're going to have to get out wide with their backs to have a chance to outrun the Utah defense to the corner. From the four, they hand it to Corey Rogers, and the receiver, their fastest player, is stopped. As they come out with a formation they hadn't shown all night, Tim Harris, the fifth defensive back, denies them. Now third and goal. I think Utah thinking the same thing. They, you, you had to think they're going to try to bounce it out there. They used the speed of Rodgers, but Mike, now you start to think, if you're TCU, do we, do we try to score with our best play, or do we make sure we get it with a better angle for the field goal and move it a little bit closer to the middle of the field? TCU using its overtime timeout. Utah has one remaining. They could use it to ice the kicker if they don't pick up the score here. The 
TCU, of course, already has made a landmark. The fullback, Jackson, that's DePriest in motion. Here's Gunn to DePriest for the win! Utah's 18-game win streak is over! TCU has won in overtime! Priest, the junior out of Keller, Texas, who did not have a catch in the first two games, comes in motion, catches the winner, and his second catch of the game is one they'll talk about for a long time. Here's Aaron with the winning coach. Well, coach, you told us yesterday when we run the ball, we're successful. What did you do different?